Hi YouTube friends, this is Brad. Today in this video I want to come right to the point, I want to be direct and I want to tell you 10 things you want to know, 10 things you need to know before you start to paint your kitchen cabinets. Number one, paint quality. In my opinion what's important is return on investment, not how inexpensive you can get the paint. When it's all said and done and you want this to last for years, just don't sacrifice quality. Go with a quality paint. After our research what we found what we love is Sherman Williams Urethane Trim Enamel. It's a semi-gloss extra white paint. It's an interior exterior gray. That way when there's water on your cabinets, I feel that there's extra protection. Look for the green can. It's emerald. It's a green can. What I love most about this water-based paint is that when it cures, it hardens. I mean it makes a solid hard finish. That's number one. Number two, it's a little bit somewhat self-leveling. I think that's an advantage. It's supposed to resist yellowing. Time will tell. We'll let you know how it holds up in a year and two years. The other thing is when you start to work with this paint, you're going to notice it feels a little bit more oily. It's going to wash up a little bit harder. You're just going to know when you start working with it that it's a higher quality paint. I think with most kitchens you can just use one gallon of paint. Ours took two because we have a larger kitchen area. Plus we also painted the shelves in our pantry. So the regular price for this paint is pretty expensive. It's $92.99. But if you go online, you'll probably be able to find a 30% off, 40% off coupon. If it's 30% off, it's $65.09. If it's 40% off, it's going to be $55.79. So again, quality. I can't overemphasize the quality of your paint. For a primer, we use Zinsser's Bullseye 123 for All Surfaces Primer. It's an interior exterior grade. It works fantastic. You can get it for $25, $26 a gallon, and you can find this at most big box stores. Number two, label each drawer face and each cabinet door with where they came from. It's going to make this project much easier. You want to be organized, whether you're using a basement, you're using the garage, whatever. My suggestion is to take some tables, put them in a row, or put them in an L, whatever you got to do. And rather than putting the tape on those surfaces, put it on the table in front of that cabinet door, that drawer face. That's definitely something we would have done a little different. So um, again, so you're putting multiple coats on. So each of these got two coats of primer and two coats of a top coat. And it's just really easy to, for these to fall off. They kind of get mixed up. So even if you mix them up, you're going to figure out where everything goes, but it does take some time. Number three, fill in any imperfections with wood filler. In fact, don't wait till the weekend or whatever when you're ready to start this project. Do this ahead of time and complete it. Give yourself a little break before you even start to paint because this takes longer than you think, especially with our 60-year-old cabinets. So you're going to want to use a good wood filler. You're going to fill in those imperfections. You're going to want to sand them and maybe fill them again and re-sand them. So do your diligence there. In retrospect, we really could have done a better job with this. So um, I cannot emphasize, take the time to do this. So this is what we used, Elmer's Proban Professional Strength Interior Exterior Wood Filler. Having used this tubby, I'm going to say I would have rather I had a tube. I think the tube would be a little easier to work with, not drying out and getting you know, your fingers back and forth and getting messed up. The other thing is, is yes, this worked but I would probably look for something else because when we actually fill with these it just seemed like it could have been a little bit denser. Um, we almost had to too many times go back a second time to put more in. So um, again do your diligence with this because all that prep work that you do that's huge. If you paint your cabinets a light color especially white those imperfections that didn't show as much with that dark ugly stain they're going to show more. All right, number four, save all your old hardware. Even if you're putting in all new, save it. Trust me, use Ziplocs, separate your hardware, and keep them in a Ziploc. So uh, what happened was we reused our door handles. We had upgraded a couple years ago. We liked them, so we reused those, and uh, we purchased new hinges, put those on. The issue was the strikes. This is our strike. This is the strike plate. And so all the big box stores, there's nothing in town that really has something that really works well with these older three-quarter inch plywood cabinets. So um, they're, they're old, they're kind of beat up, but they work. 
So we reinstalled them. So the hope is down the road to just go online and find something that we can use. So again, in our case, we're so glad we kept all our old hardware. Number five, decide whether to sand with sandpaper or to use a liquid sandpaper that will both degrease and degloss. So this is liquid sandpaper. We decided not to use this. Next year we're going to paint our bathroom cabinets so we can give a review of how well this works. So our cabinet doors, as you can see, are what they call the slab type. You don't see, they're not ornate, there's, you know, you don't have, they're very simple. So in my opinion, what we did, and I don't regret this, we sanded. So we used an orbital sander, and this is a hundred grit sandpaper, and we sanded down as close to the wood as we could go. So we went with the grain, actually we went kind of against the grain at first somewhat and then we went with the grain to get down to the wood as much as we can because in the long run I think you're going to get better adhesion with your primer if you can get down to the wood. So this worked really well and a lot of people complain about sanding. Let me tell you about sanding. If you just buckle down, you go outside and you just do it, it's not as bad as what you think because if you get a quality sander and you change these, you change these pads out like after every two cabinet doors you're going to find that it actually works very well. It goes much faster than what you think. Okay, so the other thing is, so before you sand, they recommend using like a TSP heavy duty cleaner and like one of those uh, scrubbies. So you want to wash, you want to wash your cabinet faces, you want to wash the doors, even though you're going to sand them down with a power sander, you want to uh, remove as much of that grease as you can. The thought is, especially with the cabinet faces, is that as you're sanding them, you're going to kind of move some of that grease into the wood. Okay, so um, on these cabinet faces, we didn't spend a lot of time. We just used, uh, I think it was 150 grit, but we just kind of roughed it up a little bit. That's what shows. This is what shows with your cabinets, so that's what you want to pop. You know, you rarely open your cabinets, right? So you don't need to spend too much time there. But inside the cabinets, we didn't even sand. Okay, my camera person, my better half, just told me, informed me, because she actually did most of the prep work in these. She did clean them with a TSP cleaner, and she did actually lightly sand them. I stand corrected. So maybe, by the way, that's why they look so well. So, um, and then after that, she used the TSP again to clean them, and then she you know, made sure everything was rinsed off real well. Number six, give yourself more than a weekend to do this project. Um, I think we touched on this earlier, but real quickly, so uh, we would, you know, put a coat of primer on, prime everything. We would wait till the next day for that second coat of primer, even though the primer dries in an hour. We wanted to make sure everything was hardened somewhat. I think also after you get done putting one coat of paint on everything, you're going to be like, wow, that's a lot. And you're going to be like, I want a break. So I think just waiting till the next day. Don't try to rush it. Get it right. Be meticulous. Keep your marriage intact. What we did is we had one person do all like the drawer faces and the cabinet doors. That was me and my wife. While I was working on that, she was working on um, painting the insides of the cabinets. I think I did the final coat. I think she was a little concerned because I, <laughs> I guess I'm maybe a perfectionist. I don't know if that's good or bad, but number seven, especially if you're painting your cabinets white, it is so worth it to take the extra time to paint the insides of your cabinets. So just take a look at this and imagine that looking like this, this ugly brown. I'm telling you, it's a night or day difference. So this is a lot of work. When you're in here painting, especially this corner one, you're on a ladder, you're reaching in there, your neck's funny, and so, quite frankly, you're going to get kind of sore unless you're 20 years old and you do yoga. So, um, it really takes a lot of time, but it gives it that pop. When you open that cabinet, it is so nice. I can't, you know, I'm so glad we took the extra time to paint the insides of these cabinets. So that's our recommendation. Okay, number eight. <laughs> Bloopers. Let me do that again. Number eight. <laughs> Oops. Number eight. Try to give everything the same number of coats. We use two coats of primer. We use two coats of a top coat. And so with everything, your primer and your top coat, use the same number of coats of paint. Because when you, every time you put a coat of paint on there, it gets a little bit whiter. If we were to go to a third top coat, it gets just a little bit whiter. 
So two things to take home from this. Number one, if when you're painting and you're trying to decide, boy, does it need another coat? I'm not quite sure. Lean on the side of giving it another coat. And then so um, looking here at these cabinet doors and then the face frame, um, same number of coats. Because if I did that face frame, I'm like, ah, it looks nice. Let's go with three coats. But I left two coats on these doors. I think you're going to be able to tell a difference. And so it, it really counts. So again, I cannot emphasize, try to use the same number of coats. Be meticulous. Number nine, allow more drying time than what's recommended by these manufacturers. Um, so we got everything done, all the painting done. Three, four days later, I forget, I'm putting on new hinges and I'm starting to handle these cabinet doors. And I could tell there's just a slight impression there, just a little something in oil there. And I tried to kind of rub it off and wipe it off. And just, you got to look at it with the lighting right, but there's just a little something there that didn't come off. And I've spoken to some people that do this for a living. And again, like I said before, the beauty, one of the best things about this paint is the curing. It hardens, so you need to give it time. So what am I trying to say? This, when you put that top coat on, um, even wait two, three days before you put that last top coat on. And then after that last top coat's on, I'm not kidding, wait a week, even maybe two, wait a couple weeks. I think we waited two weeks then and it worked fine. But wait like a couple weeks, just let this cure before you handle it and then you can touch it, install it, do what you want and you're fine. But I see people doing it in a weekend and having done this, I, I just don't understand how they're able to do that, you know, what is it? Because quite frankly, when you video or you take a picture, everything looks better in reality than it is. This looks awesome, don't get me wrong, but the pictures, I don't know if you've ever stayed in near Airbnb, but look at the pictures and then go to the place. There is a difference. So. Um, Again, that's why you can't do this in a weekend, in our opinion. So just, you know, just take your time, get it in your head. I'm, you know, it might be three weeks before this project's done. Okay, so like we mentioned earlier, we put the first coat of primer on, and we did prime it an hour later, like the manufacturer said. We waited till the next day, and then after priming, we waited till the next day again, and then we waited two, three days. I forget what it was before we did another top coat. So again, I think you're getting the idea, give it more time. And by the way, um, in between all these coats, look at what you're painting. There might be a little piece of lint or something there. You can just kind of wipe it, remove it. Be meticulous. So we do have a little bit of something, you know, random here and there. If you really start looking at these, you're gonna see where we could have done a better job. But overall, when you come in here, nobody's nitpicking, nobody's like, I mean, it looks awesome. I'm being real frank with you, not just because we did it, we're awesome people. But this looks really awesome, okay? Number 10, so you need to decide whether or not you want to seal these. We decided not to. In my opinion, there's some reasons not to. Number one, remember we talked about how this paint, the beauty of it is that it cures, it's super hard. So a lot of the painters, you know, they don't seal it. The other thing about sealing is it's another step. And when you, when you get to this point, you don't want to do anything more, trust me. Um, the other thing the way I'm looking at is like just like you know five years from now your kitchen walls need to be repainted you know it kind of cleans everything up well I'm looking at five years from now you know we could paint our cabinets well it's going to be super simple compared to what we did right you just pull the hardware off and you put one coat on probably even just the outside uh, we may reface them I'm not sure but we're going to give you an update every year on how these are holding up so um, I did watch some YouTube videos a while back before we started and I didn't hear this very often but I did hear it especially with white cabinets is that when they sealed it and it dried they noticed just a slight yellowing and they said you know they, you know, they liked it better it, it's not like it ruined the job it still looked really nice but they said there was something there so if you're going to seal it you maybe test a scrap piece just to see what happens so um, I would hate to paint all these cabinets, put a sealer on, and have a little bit of a change in color and be like, oh man. But at the same time, we haven't lived with these cabinets five years yet, so, you know, maybe it'll come back to bite me and I'll be like, boy, I wish I would have sealed them. You know, I don't know. I guess, again, you know, I gave you some pros and cons, and so we decided not to seal them. Bonus tip number 11. A white paintable latex caulk will give your cabinets a finished look. If you paint the inside of your cabinets white like we did, um, if you have cracks, um, these are built-ins, and to plumb them, 
straight. There's these big cracks. I mean, some of them are very wide that we filled with caulk, and it's a night and day difference. I can't tell you how awesome it looks. So we actually caulked after we painted. It looks great. I think I would have caulked before we painted if I had to do it again. So when the caulk dried because there's such big pieces, there's just a little bit of a slight hole, random, very random, and you know, here and there where there was some separation with the caulk. So just to give you an idea with the caulk, when you have big areas, normally you just use a wet finger, you know, and you put that caulk in. So if you've got too big of a crack that you're trying to fill, you're going to get some coving. So we have a little bit of that. Again, it looks awesome, don't get me wrong, but I think if I would have used a small spatula on those wide cracks and I would have went like this to brush it out instead of my finger, I would have a little bit less coving. So again, it, it's a professional finished look. Also, this corner here, there was a gap and I forgot to fill it with wood filler. Don't ask me how, but I did. And we were done painting them. I left them, we painted them, and we had that gap. Sorry, I don't have a picture. I'm like, Ooh, we should have done a better job there. So this is in here, and it's not even painted, and you can't even tell it's there. And that's, I mean, you get right up to it. So the caulk is like awesome. I couldn't believe uh, how well of a job it makes this job look. So again, the caulk is just unbelievable. So you may want to consider using this. The other thing with the caulk is when we ship lapped here and around our window frame, we put caulk all the way down and around here, so again, it finishes it off around the microwave. I hope to never pull this microwave off again, having installed it, but it's caulked around there. So, and also, I don't know if it shows, but where the cabinets meet the walls, um, we caulked, and it gives it that finished look. Even if you're not painting things white, if you put the caulk there before you paint, and then you paint over it, it's gonna give it a more professional finished look.